Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through three simple pattern hacks. So you can see right on screen is exactly what we're going to make together. There's a striped one, a chevron one, and a polka dot one. So a lot of times if you're just putting something together or if you're creating applications like stationary designs or notepads like you see on screen and you want to apply patterns to them, but you don't want to take the time to make a seamless pattern, but you still want it to look like a seamless pattern, I'm going to walk you through a really simple way to create these three different pattern types without having to take the time and make seamless patterns out of them. So we're using four different colors if you want to follow along with the exact colors I'm using. I have this set up as CMYK because I am making these with the intent to print them at home on a home printer and CMYK is generally the best color mode to keep your files in if you're printing from a home printer. So these colors right here I'll walk you through them so you can grab them. So they're in CMYK as I just mentioned so this is the yellow, the light pink, the dark pink and the dark purple. So we're going to set up the file together and then we're going to create this exact outcome together. This tutorial is really perfect if you're a beginner or new to Illustrator. Um, we're going to walk through some really simple tools that you will actually use very often as you become more comfortable with Illustrator. So I'm just going to go file new. We're going to keep this at a pretty common size um, for a notepad or even a greeting card. We're going to make this five by seven. So five inches wide by seven inches tall. And I've got a bleed on this. Um, that way I can cut it right out so I don't have any weird whiteness around the edges. The pattern will extend beyond the edge when it goes and gets cut out. So that's why I have a bleed and the standard bleed size is an eighth of an inch which is also 0.125 inches. So you can see right here my color mode is CMYK as I mentioned before. So I'm going to hit create and now I have a 5 by 7 file. I'm going to turn my rulers on by hitting command R. I've got all the keyboard strokes on screen. Whenever you see command um, on a PC it's also control. So control R for your rulers if you're on a PC. So I'm going to zoom out and the first thing I want to do is create a border which you can see right here that kind of goes around and frames whatever's going on on the inside. So there's a really quick way to do this. So what you're going to do is hit M on your keyboard for your rectangle tool. Come over here to the edge. This red line is your bleed line that goes around your document. The black line is the actual size of your document. So I'm just going to click up in the corner and drag out a rectangle. Now that I have this rectangle, I'm going to color it. So I'm just going to get rid of this black stroke right here. So select the stroke and then hit the little none icon right here. Return to your fill color and then you're just going to choose any random color you want. So I'm just choosing random color. This doesn't have anything to do with the final outcome. So then I'm going to hit V to return back to my selection tool. And now we're going to create this rectangle that's on the inside. But you can see it's equidistant from the outer edge. So the same space right here is the same space right here. And in order to achieve that, we're going to use a negative offset path. So it sounds a little scarier than it actually is. So with your rectangle selected, you're just going to come up here and go object, path, offset path. And you're going to hit preview down here. And I've already got mine set up to be negative 0.65 inches. I really like this size, but you can adjust this. Like if you wanted to see what 0.5 inches was, um, you can see it's reduced now. It's much skinnier. So just find a size that you're happy with. I like the point negative 0.65 because if it were a positive, you can see that it extends beyond your artwork and that's not what we want. We need this to be a negative. So I'm going to hit OK, and now I've got a rectangle within a rectangle. But we need this to be open so we can put whatever artwork we want in the middle. So we just want this part filled in between. So in order to do that, you're just going to rubber band select, meaning just click and drag so you can select everything at once. You're going to come over here to your Pathfinder palette. And if you don't see this over here, you can get to it by going Window, Pathfinder. And you're just going to hit this icon over here for Exclude under Shape Modes, the very last one on the right. So hit that and it'll knock out the center and this is exactly what we need. So now we're going to create all three of these. You can just create one if you want or if you want to follow along with all three. This is how I do it. So I'm just going to grab my artboard tool over here. It's Shift O and click that and then you're going to hold Alt and Alt always makes a copy. So hold Alt, click and drag. While you're dragging, hold Shift and that will keep it nice and straight. And then we're going to make one more copy of this. So hold Alt, click, drag. While you're dragging, hold Shift. And I'm giving them a little bit of space in between so we've got room for our patterns. Okay, so we're going to start with pattern number one, which is the stripe pattern, which you can see right here. I'm going to grab these colors, copy them, and paste. All right. So for a stripe, a really, really easy way to 
create a stripe pattern is by using the blend tool. So we're just gonna grab our line tool first because we need to make the actual stripe. And this is where we decide what color we want our stripe to be. And it's not going to be a fill, it's going to be a stroke. So this is what you want your color to be filled with right here. And I'm gonna make mine this light pink color. So I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard, hold shift and click on the light pink. So now we can draw our line. So I'm gonna hit my line tool, which is your backslash key on your keyboard. And I'm just going to click and I'm gonna hold shift and drag. And I'm gonna drag it out really, really big. And when you hold shift, it makes a 45 degree angle. So it makes it really easy to draw angled lines. And from here, just place it anywhere in the corner. And then you're gonna hold Alt, click, and drag. And I'm just going to put this one at the top of this corner. And now I'm gonna create a blend between these two. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on the blend tool right here. So double click on it. And this will show up and toggle this down where it says spacing and choose specified steps. And now you kinda of wanna choose a lot because we're gonna create a bunch of lines in between. And however many we set right here is going to be how many lines end up between these two lines. So I'm gonna do like 65 and see what that looks like. Hit okay, you're gonna click. You can see the little star up here on the blend tool. I'm gonna click once here and click once up here and it's going to blend them together. And I think my stripes need to be a little bit thicker and if you feel that way too, you can come over here to your stroke palette. You can get to this by going window stroke and I'm just going to up the weight of my stroke right here. So let's see. I think two is perfect. So I'm gonna leave that like that. And now we want it to fill where this blue is. We only want the stripes where the blue is. We don't want any blue, but we want it to be in this shape. So in order to do that, you're gonna select your stripes and you're gonna send them to the back. So right click, arrange, send it back. And now they're behind the blue. And now we're gonna select both the blue and the stripes. So I'm just gonna rubber band select both of these, right click, make clipping mask. And now it, snaps it right into that shape and that one's all set. So now we're gonna move on to the chevron. So we're gonna build in complexity a little bit as we go along. And we'll take care of where it says notes in these lines at the very end. So don't worry, we will come back to those. So we're gonna do the chevron pattern right here next. And you can see that our chevron pattern is one color and then our fill, this rectangle, is its own color. Right here we didn't have a rectangle color, but right here we are going to use a rectangle color. So I'm gonna come back here we know our rectangle color is going to be yellow, so I can just eyedropper that and use yellow right away. And our chevron is going to be hot pink. So I'm going to switch this over here and then hit I and then hold shift and choose hot pink. And now return to your line tool, but this time we don't want an angled line, we want a straight line. So you want to, you want to make sure it extends beyond both of these sides. So I'm just going to draw a line and in order to make the line perfectly straight, just hold shift and you'll get a straight line just like that. Let's thicken it up so we can see it a little better. I'll do three points, okay? And then from here, you're gonna go over to your appearance palette right over here. You can get to that by going window appearance. And you're gonna to toggle down this little FX icon right here, choose distort and transform zigzag. And this will put that little zigzag into the line. So hit preview and you can see you can toggle the size. So how vertical your zigzag is and then how many zigzags you have in your line. So I want quite a few zigzags so you can see it really well because it crops off right here and you won't be able to tell it's a zigzag if I don't have a bunch of them in here. But then I'm gonna reduce the size so it's a little less intense. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, so when you're happy, hit okay. And now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Hold Alt, click, drag, hold Shift as you're dragging to keep it straight. And now we're gonna to return to our blend tool. So double click on your blend tool and let's change the specified steps here to like 50. So I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna click on the bottom one or you can click on the top one, the order doesn't matter. Click here, click here, and now I've got all these zigzags. And they're actually looking a little thick now and I can return over here to my stroke palette and reduce them all at once. And you can see, now I can see my zigzags a little bit better. So now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna select our zigzags, right click, arrange, send back, 
But before, when we created our clipping mask, where we clipped into the shape, you saw that the color disappeared. And in order to keep a color behind it, we need two of these instead of one. So in order to make a copy right on top of this one, you're just gonna hit Command-C or Control-C on a PC to copy it, and then click anywhere to deselect, and then you're gonna hit Command-F or Control-F on a PC, and it'll paste it right on top of it. So now, we, with this top one selected, we're gonna hold Shift, and select your zigzags and then right click make clipping mask and now we keep that color behind it and if I separate these you can see one of them is the mask and the other one is the color so that's how that works okay so we're on to the last one let me grab my colors and move them over here okay so for this one we are making little polka dots on a dark purple colored background and the polka dots are white so we're gonna come over here and this time we are going to draw a line once again, only this time because our polka dots are white and we won't be able to see them very well at first, we're gonna apply a color to them and then we'll change them to white afterwards. We can actually make this dark purple right now. So let's do that. All right, so we'll just make, um, we'll make our polka dots hot pink for now. All right, grab our line tool again, drag it out, hold shift, and we're keeping a straight line for this one. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. So in order to make dots really fast, it's actually a really cool trick. With your line selected in your stroke palette, you're gonna hit the rounded cap right here. So click this and then rounded corner, click this one. And then you're gonna make it a dashed line. So check this, but you wanna make sure zero is where your dash is and you want a healthy distance for your gap. I like 15 right here. It seems pretty well spaced. And if you want your dots to be bigger, you just increase the weight of your line. So I can make really big dots or really tiny dots. So I'm gonna keep my dots, let's go like, I think six is good. And maybe a little further apart, let's do 18. That looks good. So now, if you saw over here, I kind of have them offset a little bit. So there's one in between each time. So I come over here and this is how I do it. With my line selected, I'll hold Alt, click and drag and offset it manually. So you can see my dots are kind of in the middle of the other dots right here. So from there, I'm going to select both of these and then hold Alt, click and just drag straight. And while I'm dragging, I'm gonna hold Shift and kind of find a good equal distance. And that feels good. And then if you hit Command D a bunch of times, it'll repeat the last thing you did. So I'll just Command D all the way down and they'll be all equal distance. And now I've got all of my dots and they're pink right now. So we need to change them to white. So we need to select them all. I'm gonna group them together because these are all individual lines. Whereas when you blend, it kind of groups them all together automatically. So I'm gonna hit Command G or Control G on a PC to group them. And now I'm gonna come over here to my color palette and with the stroke selected right here I'm going to hit the white and now they're white polka dots and I'm going to send them to the back so like we did before right click arrange send it back and now we need to make a copy of our rectangle because one's going to be used for the mask and the other one's going to be used for the color so command C to copy it or control C and then click anywhere to deselect and then hit command F or control F on a PC to paste it on top hold shift and select your dots and then right click make clipping mask and now our dots are right there so the last thing we need to do is just put in our notes and then we'll be good to go so in order to do that we're going to utilize our blend tool again so i'm just going to type out the word notes and i am using one of my own fonts for this it's called espresso roast and it comes in a few different styles so i'm going to use the script style of espresso roast right here, espresso roast script. I'm gonna increase the size of this. That looks good. And then I'm gonna draw out some lines. So I'm gonna hit my line tool again, make sure that it's a dark purple stroke, and then just hold shift and click and drag to make a straight line. And then I'm going to hold alt, click, drag, while I'm dragging, hold shift, and then make a blend between these. So double click on my blend tool, specified steps, I'm gonna do Let's do 12 and then click here, click here, and now I've got all of my lines. And then to make sure that it's exactly centered on here, I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna select my notes, and I'm going to select my pattern. 
And with all these selected, I'm just going to click one more time on the pattern so it gets this darker outline. And this will orient everything below it with this double line selected item. So I'm just going to come over here and hit this horizontal line center and it'll align everything to whatever I have double selected up here. So that's perfect. I'm going to group these together. And now I can just make a copy. And if you have your smart guides turned on, you can get to those by going view smart guides and just make sure they're checked. Um, now I can select my notes, hold alt, click, drag. As I'm dragging, I'm holding shift. And it'll give me, you can see that pink vertical line. It'll let me know exactly when it's right in the center. So then I don't have to do that anymore. And I just know it's perfectly centered right there. So that's how to create three simple pattern hacks and apply them to stationary borders in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week.